Thanks, Joe. Okay. Call to order the January 10th, 2024 meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee at 7.02. We have someone participating virtually, Chen? Uh, Heidi. 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 I thought Sandra Gropi perhaps also, but I guess not. Uh, we're not seeing. That's okay. Not right now. Great. Uh, so there being a quorum present. Uh, the first order of business, actually, I'm going to bump up to the top, is the public participation. Uh, it's new business. We'll actually continue new business at the end. But at the beginning of our, every meeting, we allow people from the public to address the committee if they have any comments or questions. Uh, usually nothing that we can address, particularly with a vote at, at that meeting. But if it's appropriate, we can bring up on a future agenda. Is there anybody here who would like to address the committee with questions, comments? Hearing none. Uh, next item is acceptance of the minutes of December 13, 2023. I think I was out for all but the end of that meeting, so um, I'll abstain from voting on that. But is there a motion to, has everybody reviewed the minutes? Does anybody have any questions or corrections? If not, is there a motion to accept the minutes of December 13th? So move, Jake. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? TJ, I'll, I'll abstain. I was in here last week. Well, last week. Got it. I, I also abstain. Got it. Uh, item two, and uh, vendor invoice packages. Chin, do you want to go through those? Oh, I'm sorry. Just someone who can run through them for the. Well, we can. Oh, do you want me to share the the vent? Yeah, give me one second. Let me let me take the presentation down. My apologies. I should have. No worries. I have one for Vertex for 773525. Uh, and then five for DRA in the amounts of 42,400. Actually, do you have it up now, Courtney? Do you want to? I don't want to short shrift anybody's <laughs> invoices, but I can run through the amounts just from what I have in front of me. So for Vertex is $7,773.25. And then we have a number of um, uh, the invoices from PRA. Uh, and then so the invoice number 12 is for $42,400. And then you have the um, PSS1 uh, invoice number 2. And uh, the amount of $81,564.20, and then PSS01 uh, invoice number 5, which is $6,081.38, and PSS number 2, uh, invoice number 2, uh, for the total of $1,925. And then they are all in the, uh, all the invoices are in the follow, uh, following pages of the VIP that was forwarded to the committee. Any questions? Yeah, I just have one quickly, unless anybody else has one. So I, I see uh, the uh, PSS01 uh, PSS01 invoice 02, it's down as other, and it's dated from back in September. October. Is that something that we just didn't, was that our fault that we didn't bring that forward? Or? Uh, that was uh, Vertex holding off on the, uh, because we were reviewing with uh, DRA, and then so Vertex hold it off in terms of because we were, um, we want to make sure that there, there was no double counting of the uh, okay. task. 
and then that all the invoices are appropriate. And then we reviewed that in details with Carl, and Carl probably was not, at least her account, accounting department was not as happy about the fact that we held it off and not paying it. Uh, Sorry about we, that, Carl. We, we confirmed <laughs> that everything is. Uh, our consultants. Yeah, we confirmed that everything is uh, appropriate, and then so that we. Okay, that cool. Out. I just saw the nine thirty twenty three date, and I was worried that we missed something. Uh, no, that was completely vertex stewing okay. and making trying to make sure that uh, the that we double check everything that there was no double billing uh, because there was a mm -hmm. uh, there was clarification needed basically. Okay, cool. Any other questions? I have Joe? a question. <clears throat> Excuse me. You've done some borings and geotech work. Any yeah. any surprises or? No. Since ledge was sort of visible on the yeah. on the surface, we knew we did some. Um, uh, no real surprises there. No unsuitable soil really. Um, so that was relatively good news. Thank you. Additional work will be still anticipated in sure. the phase. Yeah, in the next phase, we'll do more at the corners of the building. Right. Yeah. So, is that everything under environmental and site? That's Sammy Otis, I would assume? Or is uh, it? No, some of the site is the boring. Geotech, it's okay. Geotech yeah. yeah. I see some of that work is uh, Matt Crawford, Crawford too. Matt, did he want that Right. Uh, Matt Crawford has something like 20,000? 20, 20, yeah. 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 20,000. The, oh, okay, it's on, on, on there. And so that uh, basically all of his work was built under that category. The redistricting study and all that. Cool. Well, and then we, we, we also wanted to make sure that the, they had stopped at the appropriate stage and then they did not uh, uh, do any further work that was not necessary. So that was why it was held up and then we uh, took us a while to uh, clear everything with uh, uh, DRA. Great. Uh, anyone else questions? If not, is there a motion to approve in the total amount of 139743 and 83 cents? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. I'll send around the she. Oh, right. Yeah. So you you have uh, Eileen and uh, Sandra. Um, oh, and Eileen too. Yep. So we can shoot that down. Now. Welcome, Sandra. Uh, item three: community outreach. Who wants to start in this? Um, so on the community outreach that. Um, uh, Courtney, can you pull up the uh, your presentation that we have uh, uh, a we uh, on January 25th we're planning to have two uh, remote uh, community forum um, and the the plan is, is that we are going out to uh, price for the schematic design portion of the project and then that um, the uh, basically, January 25th is a tool we will be going out to a community and said, this is what's in the project and that is being priced right now. And we will give them uh, a, as, uh, the, the cost of that is really uh, the cost of the project. Uh, we will provide the information that we have previously uh, from the PSR stage. And so the idea is, is that we will uh, give the community a chance to understand what, the, what is in the project. And then when we get the pricing back, we'll review it with SB with the committee, and then uh, and then we will go to the uh, different committees in town, the select board and school committee, um, and FinCon to present the information. And then we will have a second community forum in person to present the information before taking the final vote for the schematic design uh, to for submission. So that it, you will have a chance of sort of giving everybody a, ch a chance to understand what's in the project, and then we get the price, and then we present it to everyone, and then before the uh, final vote to accept it. Chin, I spoke with Tim by phone yesterday, and he mentioned, he said he was gonna talk to you about it. I don't know if he, I know he was busy today, so I don't know if he got an opportunity. He, uh, he asked 
He suggested that, uh, well, I, I guess I should say he recommended an outside contractor to do some video productions that sounded like a great idea to me, and he said he would brief you on that uh, just to tell the committee about it and just get a general sense from the committee that, that we're good with that. The, so the idea that uh, so this uh, gentleman uh, came, came, from, came to us uh, through the, uh, another project, and they are uh, they are doing videos, and then uh, Tim has uh, Tim is recommending to the committee to use him to produce a video that uh, the and I am going to say that the, if I remember correctly, the price is actually extremely uh, 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 is re really good at something like two thousand something change uh, for for a short video, and then that. Producing the short video would allow us uh, allow the uh, the message to be able to uh, put the, we can put together and then put it out as quickly as we can. Um, so this just came up in the last two three days um, in terms of the information that uh, and then I think that it was shared with uh, Dr. Bayeda and uh, uh, obviously Chair uh, and I don't I forgot who else is on that email chain. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, Joyce, you guys, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, <clears throat> recognizing the um, other districts that um, the organization, the company has worked with, uh, I, I don't think this is, is a bad idea at all. Um, I don't think this is a bad idea based on um, doing some background check. I know that the uh, one district that they're currently working with on a major high school project is North Attleboro, and I know the superintendent there very well. Um, and other districts that they work with, the, the price is um, under $2,000, um, which is uh, pretty reasonable to put together a professional video that shows folks um, all the uh, um, information that you need on, on, on giving people that, that, um, that positive aspect of, of a, a project like this by a third party. Um, so it's not just, you know, it's, it's being done professionally, I guess, is the, is the end result. So. Um, if, if, if you outsource that and then so that the committee can, uh, so we can focus on what else, what getting the message out and then rather than having to manage the production of it. So the, the gentleman he was talking about was, uh, I do remember his name, but I don't want to drop it in a meeting without, since he's not engaged, but he's a former news guy whose name you may recognize who started this business and, uh, Sounded to be pretty professional, incredible to me. I don't. I'm, if he described it to you and Joyce, also, you probably got the same impression that I did. Is that these are professionally made made videos that seem worthwhile. We didn't do anything like this at the high school, but we did do a lot of video at, on the high school project. It was produced by Jeff Pickett mostly, who did an excellent job. Um, but of course, we don't have Jeff to abuse working for SMAC anymore, so. <laughs> Anybody, any thoughts on this or any questions on community outreach generally, or Chin, if you have anything else that we haven't hit? Um, so the, uh, Mr. Chair, that the, uh, in theory that uh, when we spend the money, before we spend the money, the com committee should authorize it, uh, and that you, you should take a vote, and then that for that purpose that uh, um, Perhaps that the committee can entertain the vote that to authorize the chair to for up to X number of dollars uh, that the chair has the uh, has the authority to uh, engage with this uh, uh, for engage with the video production uh, group uh, to to pr produce the video. And I know that there's a hand raised over there. Yes, I always raise my hand. <coughs> um, the people who viewed the video, are they, like, how long are the videos? What's the, um, and then, like, what would the distribution, is it something that could, we, could it, is, like, something tw tweetable that people would, exactly. would, would click on and exactly. then watch for 30 a minute or whatever, or, like, is it? 10 to 15 second, okay. 20 second snippets that go okay. to social media. So they hit all your social media platforms up. So we could link it. And so they, he, this production company would do multiple videos for us, or is it one that was, video? That was the take that I got, yeah. was that it was multiple. I thought the amount was, I thought, I thought Tim told me it was 
higher than just 2,000, but I might have been half listening on that point. So if Chin and Joe said to, I trust them and not me on that, but. Um, Somehow 2000. Uh, no, you're probably was, right. Was, uh, stuck in my head. Um, so. Now, what would we get for 2000? We'd get. One snippet, two snippets? I mean. It's a good question. Yeah. Um, what, when would we be going? When do you think we'd be going forward with something like this if you. Because it, it's all run by Vert. You guys would be driving it. Right. Uh, so, so, so the. Right now, that somewhere around now that you want to start putting out putting out information on the website and then also start doing um, some community call it the role show mm -hmm. to basically going around the com community to go in front of any com any group that is willing to host uh, to give them the information and then so th at the moment that we still lack the last piece of uh, which is the uh, the cost the firm cost and then so that what Right now, we're aiming to have by February 1st to have that piece of information. And then so that by February 1st, we're, uh, we anticipate to have the estimate back in terms of what is in the project. And then number uh, the second half of the piece, which I asked Fran earlier on, is to uh, translate the cost uh, with the, and build up a project budget, which calculates out the MSBA reimbursement. Uh, as an estimate right now, and then uh, and then full and so that you would be able to calculate um, so for the project will be um, the the total project cost minus the MSBA reimbursement so which will be the true cost to the town, which at that point we apply the uh, the bond information in terms of how many year and then how uh, what's the percentage interest and then that uh, and whether that is a flat or uh, uh, declining one, and then that we then push out the information to the public at that point in terms of this is the project, and then uh, aiming for the, uh, and then at that time that we'll uh, move forward and submit to MSBA, and then uh, at the at the same time that uh, start the uh, the uh, inf the to bring the information to the general public. So at that, uh, and, and, and yeah. this is all within. So correct me if I'm wrong on this. So you, we're not asking for any amendment to the Vertex contract. This is all within the Vertex contract right you, now. You can, so. just simply, yeah. you, you can just simply say that it's yeah. completely Vertex and then so run everything through Vertex and then that would be another way to do that. Yes. Sure. So, so this is an extra on top of Vertex just to clarify, not that we had money. Not that we have any uh, money to add. <laughs> right now we still have, uh, budget-wise, yeah. we have, uh, this is part of the reason that I, uh, um, Carl and, and, and us uh, hackle over to make sure that we can pull anything that we did not spend uh, into the reserve. So I think right now we have s something in the neighborhood of $20,000 uh, in reserve for communication, uh, whether it's for, uh, for a mailer or um, hiring uh, somebody. Okay. So there is a, uh, in the budget, there is a, um, Contingency money that is uh, that we have not allocated for anything. Uh, didn't spend anything on drive right. So that that was part of the. Don't even say Fano anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> so, so there is mo there, there is money available in okay. the uh, the town's allocated budget that we can uh, okay. apply for that. Okay. So. How you think you want a motion to uh, to authorize Vertex to go forward with this outside contractor for video production? Can can I ask? No, first? please. Can, can we get a uh, a scope of services before we take any vote so we know exactly what sure. we're voting for? We we can get that and then get that for you. To yeah, the makes sense. And for the committee to yes. Thank you. Yeah. Is okay. there a general sense that we should do this before they? Yes. Yeah. Without taking a vote, because that's smart. We should know what we're yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I just want to follow up. Please. Um, would these videos also be able to help us with, I know we've talked about like narrative around, uh, specifically around like what's the project do for me, for like town, just in general for town, like not me personally, but like for people who are watching this in the town, would they also be able to help with that type of narrative with the videos as well as we 
move farther along in the project. I think we can get some examples to show you. Yeah, it's hard without. Yeah. yeah. yeah that would be because anything that we yeah. do has to be fact-based only. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I, I was so about to bring that up. The, so what we would be doing, because of the, this is uh, uh, part of the committee's work, so it will be information. Uh, so information is that um, with the project that uh, with the completion of the project that would allow the uh, the superintendent and school committee to reallocate the student pop population to the to uh, uh, to the buildings and that will result in a reduction of overcrowding uh, so it has to be factual based as an information to the community right but isn't it also factual based like what and correct me if I'm wrong here like isn't it also factual based like what happens if a project moves forward or doesn't move forward or like yes. what the positive and negative yes. impacts of a project are? That's kind of what I was saying. Like, right. So the factual. Because so we've heard, Katie and I have both heard that question a lot. So like, heard it today. Heard it today multiple times. <laughs> um, um, so, so I think that's that if people are asking us those questions and those are people directly connected to schools, I can only imagine what the questions are with people who are a step removed from schools. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the facts will also, will also include the tax impact uh, uh, for, and, and that tax impact will be based on the, uh, the assessed value of the, uh, the property and the, uh, the bond rating information, which we're getting. Um, and then that would also, um, the, and then there will be also information such as uh, uh, timeline and when does that happen, that kind of information. If not, we can move on to schematic design update. Carl? Well, we had some um, site um, information to share with you, an updated site plan. And our landscape architect is with us too, answering the questions. But it, it's um, not anything that's, that's drastically different than what you've seen, but, but more detail added and uh, basically uh, in, in preparation for, for giving uh, uh, the plans and specifications that cost estimators. So um, it's still, um, you know, totally on the school property now. You know, we're not using the uh, um, easement not to be named adjacent um, <laughs> to the property there. So you can see there's a, a dark straight road coming in from Park Street, that's a bridge, the darker areas there in the yellow highlights, and the uh, secondary emergency access from Haynes Road is also a bridge because both of those areas are, um, uh, you know, crossing wetlands, and to have the least impact on the wetland, it's actually an elevated sort of bridge uh, there so that the, you know, the wetlands and the um, groundwater can flow underneath. Um, Otherwise, the, the other things we want to highlight that maybe are different, I can't remember exactly the last time we shared this with you, the darker green vegetation areas um, within the site development areas are areas that we want to literally rope off and not touch and leave the trees and the topography, the rocks, you know, that are there. Um, and, and that's, you know, how it would be handled on a construction site to, to protect them. Um, and. You know, things like that are, are really unique and valuable on a site like this. You know, planting a tree, it takes, you know, 20, 30, 50 years to get to be some of the, the size of some of the trees out there. So if we can protect some, it gives nice context to the building, particularly a three-story building, uh, so it won't feel out of place in, in the woods there. And you can see the most significant one with the cursor is right by the front entrance there as you come in. So it, it gives a nice framing of the of the front entrance to keep that, and, and that's actually a mound too, it's elevated, so it, um, it, it nicely screens um, sort of the mechanical end of the building, but also the kindergarten play area too off to the side, so that's not immediately, uh, you know, apparent and connected to the, to the parking lot, it has some separation there. Um, otherwise, I, I think we've developed um, 
the uh, loading dock on the back. It's not that great. It's like what's at South School now, which is what the facilities folks wanted. The grading works well for that as, as the road comes around the building. Um, there will be some cut and fill in order to achieve this um, footprint um, uh, on the building, um, but that is the low side of the building, so it's uh, good to keep the drive down low there as it goes around. As it goes around in a, a sort of clockwise direction there behind the school, um, the topography actually goes up and we'll be cutting into the, the, the uh, grades um, at that point. Um, but not significantly, it may be five feet or so on one side and five feet of fill on the other side to, to balance it off. Everything is handicapped accessible from the parking lot, from the buses, from the playgrounds. Everything is, uh, you know, at grade or sloped at less than 5%. I don't think we have to have any, you know, ramps, the little ramps that are steeper than 5% is railings and all. Um, we should point out, if we zoom in a little bit, Courtney, about the fences and, and sort of containing the, the play areas, um, because that is a scope item that, that might affect cost as to the extent of it and what people are imagining. Um, we should start off, I guess, we're not fencing in the entire property. You know, the entire property on the, you know, 40 acres or something. Yeah. We're, we're trying to be judicious and strategic in where the, the fencing happens. Um, but we want to keep the kids safe when they're out in the playground, keep them contained, um, keep out intruders, including little animals that might you know, come across the site as well. So behind the building, we're not seeing your screen, Courtney. Sorry, we lost it. You're muted. Um, so I, couldn't, I couldn't zoom in PowerPoint, so I'm switching over to uh, Bluebeam. Bear with me. So the idea is that in the mornings, you know, this, let's call it the fire lane around the building, is also the kindergarten drop-off. So it needs to be open and accessible to cars. Um, so there is a gate, right? Um, is that number 10? It'll be somewhere around here. Uh, right there. At the 16. the 16. There's a gate that will have to be open each day to allow cars to go through and, and drop off. Um, the kindergarten entrance is there to the to the left. That the uh, sort of upper left wing is the kindergarten wing. That's their entrance point there. Um, but then during the day, um, when both um, upper grade students and kindergarten students are in, you know, their play areas um, adjacent to that circular road, we we want to keep cars out. Um, so the gate could be closed or cones put there. That's easier. But you know that they're gate is obviously safer in the sense no car is going to go through it. Um, uh, but trucks could still access the loading dock without going around the playground area. So it, it allows a, a good separation of that traffic um, there and, and safe um, segregation. And, and then to keep the children in the playground areas and not running off into the woods, um, following the curved road on the outbound side, on the wooded side, would be a, a four foot high chain link fence right up against the clear cut of where the trees were removed. So the, the pavement is actually within the school area, you might say, in that sense. And then going around to the, to the other side to keep cars from the parking lot side off the road as well, even though we may have signs that say one way and do not enter, that we know that doesn't necessarily keep a car out. It, we, we'd suggest having another gate there at number 16 to to keep cars from driving through because there are a few parking spaces there um, as well. So in that sense, um, um, the kindergarten play area six and seven is fenced in and that, and that whole semi-circular playground behind the school is fenced in. So whenever the students are outside, um, whether it's in the playground or student gardens or a little outdoor classroom area, they, they're always contained and, and can be fenced in there. Beyond that, um, we were concerned about the um, playground, the play fields rather, the athletic fields too, as to you know what makes sense there in terms of fencing. So again, what we're suggesting is that there be fencing along the tree line to the left there. Again, just to keep the kids from running off into the woods un unsupervised or out of sight there. 
Um, and then because that emergency access road is also not to be used on a daily basis, they would be bollards and it could be another gate but or just a chain across the road both there and at the you know the Haynes Road end of it as well. Um, and then we suggest along the north of the play field where the green line was just drawn there um, also be a fence so that all of the, the soccer fields if a ball was kicked and going down it's not going to end up in the wetlands um, you know 200 feet away um, it's contained in the the gray areas of the basketball court and the pickleball courts also have chain link fence around them too so that's kind of the extent of the fencing on the site, which I think is maybe a new scope item that we hadn't detailed before with you, but we think it's important because there can be some some misconceptions. We've certainly seen that before where people think, you know, we fence in the entire site, you know, to keep uh, folks off at the property line or something like that. We're not going that far. Um, yeah, we, we did talk about as you come across the bridge entering the site, there is a sidewalk there. There's a fairly good drop off there so we probably want to fence just for safety reasons so uh, people don't go wandering down the hill into the into the wetlands um, but then the sidewalk crosses the the uh, drive and goes to the school and basically that's the only road crossing you have to make as a pedestrian I think coming in all the way to the to the front door on that uh, pedestrian path is there any thought is there any thoughts of doing like a raised pavement or something to kind of slow people? Right um, here. For that crosswalk? A speed bump. Speed bump, yeah. yeah. Or a speed table. Well, like we, we have at the high school. We call it speed yeah. tables. You know, when you raise it and the sidewalk is at, I mean the crossing is at the sidewalk level. Um, that, that certainly be appropriate there because it's, it, it's a slow down point anyways for cars. Yeah. The decision point as they come in. We're also suggesting um, putting a, a, a traditional stone wall right there, just as an entrance feature as you come in, right where the, the road forks would be very nice, it'd be very visible. And we are going to be disturbing some existing stone walls on the site. So hopefully we could salvage those those um, rocks and, and reuse them. Um, right there might be a place to mount a sign too for the name of the school. It doesn't have to be, but um, and, and with the backdrop of the existing trees as you can see there. I think otherwise the, the flow um, and all that is, is similar to what we've shared with you before. Um, a couple of, in terms of pricing, since that's the next step for all of this, um, there were a couple alternates that we wanted to think about. Alternates meaning if bids come in low or if we have the budget, they'd be nice to add to the project, but we could live without them. So that's generally the way we think of it, that, that their additive would be um, and also the fact that they may get funded separately. Perhaps we get community um, uh, what do you call it? preservation um, funds, CPA funds. So um, the uh, pickleball courts, since they're not truly for elementary kids necessarily, they could be, but they're, they're also there in the, in the scope uh, for the public, um, may want to be you know, priced separately. So that we could, and we can still decide by the time we go to bid as to whether these continue to be bid alternates. But for this phase of the project, we'd like to break out the pricing just so we can identify them. Um, and then whether any of the, these um, recreational spaces get lighted is a question too. For elementary schools, they don't need to be lit. The kids aren't there in the evenings. Um, but if this wants to be perceived as a community school, that might be used by others. Or, um, we, we also want the input of the police on this question too because this is a school in the woods. It may not be the best place to encourage gathering in the evenings or weekends. Um, we'd like their opinions um, uh, on that. So we are right now considering um, pricing out lighting just so we know what it costs and we can make the decision down the road um, uh, in that regard. Uh, but we certainly would like, you know, all the parking areas and the pathways from the parking to the school because we know the school does have evening, you know, back to school nights and, and uh, presentations and, and so forth. So there, there will be pedestrian lights on the walkways. It's just the lighting of those fields that's um, in question. 
and, and also the lighting of the exit road too. Um, we, we may want to um, think of that separately because again, we don't want that to be perceived as a, as a regular road in the sense of um, you know, being utilized every day, but it does need to be plowed if it's emergency access. So it is going to be paved um, and 20 feet wide, which is, we think, the minimum that we can do to get away with. And it can work as a, as a nice um, uh, bicycle access to the site, too, safer than coming in across the bridge from Parker, uh, Park Street. Um, it might be utilized that way for both pedestrians and, and bikes could come in that way. So it, it will be paid. Um, I don't know if Ty is with us. If there's anything else, Ty, that we wanted to, to bring up or need to get um, answered by the committee? Still with us? Uh, no, Ty, Ty isn't here, but uh, we, we will. The main things that we added were what you highlighted with the fencing extensions. Um, and then we, what we don't have is the speed table right now, so we can include that in the scope of work. And by, I didn't mean to say it had to be a speed table. I'm just looking at something to, to point out that it is a pedestrian crossing, yeah. because as much as we think it's a slowdown point, um, I am pretty sure that it will not be that slow of a, uh, a space when they come over that bridge. Just yeah, it, it makes sense to change that. At the entrance drive from Park Street, um, we don't have a definitive answer yet with the state on whether, you know, what kind of lighting and crosswalk and all we'll have there, but we are going to include, you know, a budget allowance for developing a, a signal there. Um, uh, the amount of traffic that a school generates is kind of limited to the morning and afternoon, and the state has um, kind of minimums that in order to get a traditional red, yellow, green light that, that, you know, cycles all day long, you have to have a certain amount of traffic. Maybe um, there's a way to have, you know, a, a wire in the, in the road that, you know, only when cars are exiting does the light go into red, yellow, green cycle. And otherwise it's blinking green all the way, you know, for the people on Park Street during the day. Um, so we don't know exactly what kind of signal will be there, um, but we want to carry costs for for developing a, a traffic signal and, and a crosswalk. Because um, the, the sidewalks are on the other side of Park Street, they're not on the school side uh, at this time. I think those are the major site um, uh, cost uh, issues that, that we've identified. You can see the extent of paving and play area. Everything that's in, in blue is is the rubberized surface um, with play structures and the play structures have been selected um, you know in concert with uh, the principals and others and um, will be priced as, as part of this and um, we can still modify the selections down the road but it gives us a good basis of design okay well um i have questions so I don't want to monopolize this. Anyone else have questions before I do? Joyce? I'd like to hear yours first. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. So it looks like you pushed the school about 500 feet southwest? Oh, it wasn't that much. Um, it, it, it's about the, the diameter of that, <clears throat> that mound that we're saving in front of the school to save the mound. Otherwise, we were kind of cutting it in half with the drop-off and... So that's why it shifted, I'd say, maybe uh, 50 feet to the southwest. And a little further east. Uh, oh. Yeah, we're trying to be as tight as we can to the easement, um, the right of way going through there. Um, mm -hmm. the, this is just a general question. So the the overlay, the green overlay surrounding the building, is that just estimated area of clearing or is that actually? No, right now that's pretty much our limit of work, the limit of clearing, yep, yep. Uh, uh, more of my questions are focused on the emergency access. Yep, um, yep. You said bridge. There is a bridge. How, how long is that bridge? That's like 100 feet long. Boy. Yep, yep. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, so, that's how wide the wetland is underneath it. So you say bridge, and my immediate thought is of the, well, <laughs> of, of the several ways to cross a wetlands, bridge, a bridge is always the most expensive. 
Well, is there an open bottom culvert option that we could do that would be cheap? It's an emergency access. It is. It is. It, so. It's basically a series of of sauna tube, you know, supports, just oh, concrete yeah. and and a platform above it. Pretty flat, low, you know. It's not a big superstructure, and, they, and it, the wetland isn't very low beneath the, the height of the roadway. It seems, and you don't have to agree, but I think mm -hmm. you would in the, in, you know, if maybe we had a bottle of wine or something, Carl. But, <laughs> I mean, to, to build a bridge for an emergency access just yeah. seems to me so wasteful that if we have to do it, we have to do it, but it really in, Environmentally... <clears throat> That's what it looks like, uh, one I, of them, I, but... I, I missed what Courtney said there. Yeah, she showed an example. Speak up. Oh. This uh, might be an opportunity for educational um, access for wetlands as well. Oh, yeah. You could, we, you know, we can incorporate a pedestrian bridge in a conjunction with the, you know, the main... This is obviously a two-lane double-traffic main street first, so this will be a little bit more narrow over here. But... I think this is a nice opportunity to do something where you can integrate a learning experience here as well. You know, it's well, not I'm on for, parks. I'm all for it then. I, I, I will say I'm probably a unicorn in this respect. The bridge onto Park Street, mm -hmm. it, as much as Fano Drive would have been the preferred option, I thought it would be a very, it could be a very attractive entrance to mm -hmm. the school. Mm -hmm. And I like that part of it, but... Um, just the idea of building a bridge for an emergency. We, we are, we're exceeding, we're exceeding the allowable um, impact on wetlands, you know, the 5,000 square yeah, feet. Yeah. So they're going to challenge whatever proposal we have. Um, are we minimizing the impact as best we can? So by saying we're elevating the road and having only a few sauna tubes actually in the wetland, it, it does minimize um, the impact to the, to the wetland. All right, well, I had other questions, but they're sort right, of just stray. Go ahead, Diane, please. <clears throat> Wetlands, uh, we've just had a tremendous amount of rain and snow. Mm -hmm. Is that going to get high enough to cover that road? Will it ever? Yeah, we, the, um, the bridge coming in is actually, that's the, the lower elevation on, on the site. Um, it is in a flood zone, but they, we have those lines on our survey. But we're actually raising the, the bridge from Park Street is coming up, and and the building sits, you know, well above the the flood zone. How about this one? Are and and this one place? is out totally outside of a flood zone. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So even though it's wet, and I've walked there too, it, you, you can walk there. It's not mushy. It's you know sometimes maybe, like today, it might be um, after a rain, but um, it, it's not a swamp necessarily, the way you think of it. I'm sure there are people will ask that question. Mm. And people, neighbors will wonder if we're going to, you know, flip by developing cause flood to their basement or something. That always comes up to, and our engineers can answer that, that no, we're containing all the storm water on site and there'll be no off-site impact to either flow or quantity or you know, that sort of thing. Heidi, you had a question? Um, yeah. Heidi, can you speak up a little bit more? Sorry, can you hear me now? Just barely. No? Sorry, I don't have a great speaker. Is it coming <laughs> over? We can hear you. Okay, I'm just thinking about if we had to evacuate all the students for any reason, it would appear that the front might be congested with emergency vehicles, fire, police, whatever, and that having this bridge might actually be the most uh, reasonable way to evacuate the site and have parents pick up on that other road, um, which they obviously couldn't do with a culvert or any other situation in the wetlands. Mm -hmm. So for safety and school evacuation, I I'm just in favor of the bridge for that reason. Mm -hmm. That, that is you. a good point. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to kind of understanding TJ's comments since I've had some experience with uh, secondary access with schools that um, end up becoming um, wild grass and weeds and never plowed and mm -hmm. truly if you had an access requirement you wouldn't be able to use it. 
I think if anything, the bridge requires that we do maintain it, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. the the <coughs> access on a regular basis. So if there is a storm between either our staff or working with the town, we would want that cleared mm -hmm. on a regular basis because it is a bridge. So therefore, it would require the somewhat road to also be cleared on the way yeah, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I get it in terms of um, not necessarily being the biggest supporter of this exit way, but because mm -hmm. I was with the other one. But since this is what we have to do, um, having access to um, emergency vehicles, ability for us to get buses through if needed, or even just walking it running out, mm -hmm. it, it, the bridge kind of sets the tone that we need to clear it on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would think that it's the combination of the two wetlands up front and at the emergency access that puts us up against the 5,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. That if we only had one or the other, we could we could fill and replicate, which I would rather do over yeah, a bridge. I, I don't know what the quantities are. Um, Has to be. I'm but, thinking. You said yeah. 100 feet, and I'm thinking 50 feet wide by 100 feet. Yeah, yeah. Right there, we're at 5,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. I just it's just the cost that just you're right Joe mm -hmm. I mean if it's a bridge it's going to be maintained whereas other things might never be but mm -hmm. it's just an expense that and but, by the way I don't know what it costs I just have a conception that it's a, a big expense for something that I won't forget, be used uh, Tom I had we did think about the what the cost of the bridges both bridges versus the cost of paving and developing Fano with the, Equal? And, no, it wasn't equal. The bridges were like half the cost. Really? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. It's it's a smaller amount, and then also we're not doing as much uh, uh, drainage. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not doing oh. a full size. Because Fano was, you know, yeah, developed yeah. as a yeah. full, yeah. you know, town road. Um, All right. Cool. The length yeah. of those the length of those bridges is a little bit uh, longer than. Um, 100 feet. This one's probably about 200 over here. Yeah. The one on Haynes Road, he said it was probably about 100. And I looked at Katie's plan here. It looked looked like that. Could looked like it'd probably be about. Yeah, actually, it looks about the same. So you're right. You're right, Courtney. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. All right. I don't want to. From having anymore. walked that property in fall, the the trail system back there is pretty extensive. I was actually able to walk without it being wet right up to the property lines for the most part. But it is used, and I think that this road will also just aid to to the people who are walking their dogs and doing the biking and coming into the trail, um, which is already, like I said, very established. Another path in that I see us having to maintain it absolutely. Um, not for the egress, but I think the, the people are going to kind of demand it as, as their access, walking, not driving. Um, I had questions about the back of the building um, and the field site, and this is really for the school people here because I know it's going to come up. We haven't really talked about it, uh, but when you're putting the pickleball and things that are meant for public access, and you're putting them on school property, and we've you know talked a lot about you know the electronic the electric vehicle charging. We've talked about it with other um, resources on site, in terms of of is it far enough away from the schools that we're going to allow adults to play pickleball during the day, um, and and are you going to want it lit at night so that they can? And it's part of a bigger conversation. The whole part that your playgrounds are around the back of the building, and that is a trend. It's what I saw at Sunita Williams, which is beautiful, but you, you can't drive up to the playground. You get out and you walk. Um, you know what kind of security in terms of lighting, um, and and on that road and whatever that that people would have access or that they'd feel safe and comfortable. Conversation for public safety. I just wanted to throw it all out there because it will come up. Um, it always does. And in terms of how we have to think about how we're going to. I think it's a great question. So I've been doing a little research on this when the idea of the pickleball came up as a request of the high school, which was in the fall. And what I found in asking other superintendents and school districts what they do when they do have pickleballs on site is there's two ways. There's a hard no. Nope, not available during school days. Available after school hours, available on weekends, available the breaks and so on. And then there's the, this is the process, registration, 
you know, all of that stuff, even quarry checks in some districts in order to be able to use it during the day. Um, so it, it's, 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 I mean, we have, uh, I mean, I sat on the school committee at one point. We've had a pretty hard policy on saying school day is for yep. children and school, and then it's available after. I think the key here would be if, in fact, we have lighting as part of it, then I think it's an easier communication to those adults who are looking at saying, yes, I support this project because one of the things I want to get out of it is basketball, pickleball, using right. the field. If there's no light. If there's no light, then I think because, you know, right now it gets dark pretty, pretty early, and I know we're in January, so you really right. wouldn't be doing a lot of pickleball in January. Um, but there's been winters in the last few years where December people were still golfing. So um, uh, the fact of the matter is um, I, I think that, I mean, as the superintendent, I, I support the hard stop. Um, I'll give it up to the committee to decide because it's a policy issue. Um, but um, in terms of um, lighting, I think that becomes a major uh, potential for, for the utilization by appropriate adults, town residents. Et cetera. So we, we had this discussion on the high school when we were adding in, you probably remember when we brought the CPA articles forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had this article and I had a long discussion with Dr. Rizzi at the time about who's going to pay for the, the electricity for the lights when it's, you know, that takes away from, from uh, the school budget, obviously, and we didn't want that. So um, in the end, it was resolved. It was the cost was rolled into the school budget. But my uh, my point back then, and I guess it would be now, is if you if you brought that forward in the in the school project budget, I, I guess you have more control. But if you're going to propose it as a CPA expense, Community Preservation Act, Act expense, it's a difficult sell to town meeting to say that. We want you to pay for this. The money's there, so but we want you to pay for this, and then your use is going to be regulated roughly because it's school property. That that's the, and that's for you and the school committee to discuss. I, but I had it with Maggie uh, Rizzi back in 2016, 17, and in the end, I I just remember saying, if 10 years from now someone says we can't play on the soccer field at night because the school committee won't. <laughs> won't turn on the lights. And I said, Maggie, if you're not here, I'm going to be banging on someone's door because you told me that. <clears throat> so my, my point is, I, I, I did propose, I wrote out a proposal for how the cost could be apportioned, but I'm happy to show you, but Maggie didn't like it. So, What are we talking about for a cost for lighting? We're Ballpark. Gonna, we're going to identify that. I don't, I don't know as you mm -hmm. sit here, but we'll have it in a few weeks. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there's two, two different kind of costs. One is the capital cost, which we will have that information. But in terms of the electricity uh, use, and uh, that, that's a separate, uh, that, that become a harder, because installing a second meter is yeah. clumsy. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and we never did sub-meter or second meter any of the lighting <laughs> with the... CPA stuff at the high school. That's all on the, that's all on the school's electric bill. Well, there's, there's a couple things here, right? Um, so first of all, there's the community use of this that we we would support, and I would um, I would um, suggest to the to the school committee as part of our cost of doing business. But there's also the other part, and that is that these fields could potentially be rented by third for-profit yeah. organizations, oh, sure. yeah. of which you're taking that charge. Uh, and this is something I just did in the district I just came from, where we're taking that charge to the for-profit organizations, pooling that money back into a revolving account that offsets the electrical cost mm -hmm. so that there is no expense to the local taxpayer at all when, in fact, those are on. And pickleball has become very popular, yeah. but there could be a, 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 uh, there could be a um, situation of that, that small soccer field look, slash lacrosse field with the high school, with another field in town being used for a tournament off of Route 24, uh, 27, 138 on a weekend, and you're making $150, $175 an hour, and you're saying, okay, let's move some of those monies into that expense so that we don't have to worry about it. So I think there's a lot of different ways to look at this. 
what do you think about to to you and Joyce particularly, but everybody else on the committee also? Um, I, I don't mean. To, what do you think about this and something that Carl said uh, that some of these recreational items can be sort of boxed off as as elective options in the future? What if we took some of those things like <clears throat> pickleball court lighting, other? Uh, Courtney said the you know we could make an educational experience out of the wetlands. Those things could all be folded into a CPA request, just not on our time frame for the school appropriation request. Uh, I don't think. I mean, we we could, but so I mean, what if we did that, Carl? What are your? I, I guess I'm do asking. You, do you, Do you mean to take it out of the project totally? To, well, totally, and then price it out two it ways. CPA? Yeah, price it out two ways. What if we included those in, and then what if we included those in an op uh, as an option that we'll come back in a year and bring forward in a CPA, and we can sort of pre-sell it to town meeting at the time. But I mean, any way to get things done in a positive way and financially prudent is good. I think the question would be, what if it doesn't come through? Now you've got a bunch of areas that are just left to be mowed, I guess. Um, and no field for the schools to use for right. their field. Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm not talking about all. Uh, I'm talking about like like a pickleball court. Yeah. I would separate from an athletic field. Okay. That would go. One would go with the school, and the other would be an extra. That, that's really the only thing that's extra in addition to the light fixtures. Oh that well. Would be the area of the pickleball. All right, keep it in. The elementary school. <laughs> everything else, right? As everything else. Yeah. 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 You have to be careful about. It. <clears throat> about alternates, though, because if you delete something by alternate t legally, you can't put it back by change order. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, right. Yeah. Joe, it was a lot more fun when you weren't on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> been dealing with public bidding all my life. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I, I think to Carl's point, I think it's 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 a matter of of putting it in and pricing it and seeing what it is and then making the, the critical decision when the, the time comes. There's also the potential that um, to not only the uh, the CPA, but m maybe there is a, an organization that's looking um, to do so. Um, I don't want to misspeak for the town, um, but I am hearing plenty of rubblings about recreation looking for space for pickleball. Um, so, because they're getting bombarded with the same phone calls I'm getting bombarded with. Okay about where to put it. Um, and so there is a potential here for a, a little bit of a dual project, if you will, um, where, uh, you know, once we get a cost, it, we might say, okay, it's, it's um, just throwing out a number, it's $20,000, probably too low, but just using that as a number, there's the potential that, you know, a, a separate uh, article could be part of, of doing that, or it could be a capital item, one-time cost, um, that's done out of free cash or just thinking and, and the ideas. MSBA rules have fortunately changed in terms of getting grants. Um, it, they no longer deduct their grant. It, you know, it used to be that it, it kind of was a disincentive for districts to try to raise money independently. And, but if you could get it funded, um, it, it wouldn't change your reimbursement from the MSBA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so anything else on schematic design and I know that we have we want to discuss uh, CM at risk versus design bid build, but is there any other questions on the site design, et cetera? We were just going to flip through oh, uh, exterior yeah, oh, materials. Yeah, take, take, showing sorry, you, Carl. You know, um, how that's developed into the game. It's getting more detailed as we do the cost estimators, like uh, next week, I think we're, we're scheduled to. Um, so again, the main um, materials are still as we shared with you previously. There's sort of traditional red masonry at the base. What in tan color is kind of a, a cementitious composite material um, that's not exactly wood. We wouldn't use wood that you know, has maintenance and longevity issues, but th this um, uh, has a wood feel to it. Um, and can be you know, lighter in color um, uh, up above there for the upper two stories. The, the darker, er, darker gray areas are areas where we'd like to use, um, again, not literally stone, which is very expensive um, actually to, to lay up, but, but um, 
you know, a, a concrete material that's made to look like and colored like stone in, in very select areas near the front entry and, and near, you know, kind of to break the building down into, um, into smaller pieces. Um, so there'd be some stone right by the front door there in that blank wall. Um, and, and then the, the other materials you've seen at the high school at the gym as a way to get diffuse light in uh, economically. There's that what's called cow wall is the brand uh, translucent panels um, for, for um, lighting the, the gymnasium there on the left. Um, and I think those are the major materials. Obviously, we're trying to be very um, strategic with the use of glass, the amount of glass. To just to keep the energy use down. It, it's a real challenge these days where everybody loves natural light in the buildings and daylight and it's great for education. So we try to be very judicious and put as much as we can into the educational areas, put as little as we can get away with in all the non-educational areas like, you know, obviously boiler rooms and janitor's closets and spaces that aren't occupied all day long by people um, to make them windowless even if we can, um, that sort of thing. So. Uh, we're trying to be, you know, uh, uh, considerate of, of getting even lighting, you know, so when you're in a classroom, even though the entire wall is in glass, it's relatively evenly illuminated um, inside. Um, and there are some pop-up areas that what you're seeing popping up above the roof there is over that um, collaborative area in the classroom wing, so that to get some light into the center of the building um, as well. You can see it in the three-dimensional models. And we're still including the, the green areas on the roof, the, the vegetated areas, um, and a couple of walkout areas from the second floor and the third floor. And um, including in, in sort of the base building, uh, some solar panels on the roof of the gym, which we think um, gets us a certain lead point, but providing you know other areas for for future uh, solar panels as well on, on the remainders of, of the flat roof areas and being careful about where we put rooftop units. One, so you don't see them from the ground on the entrance side, and two, so that we preserve as much flat roof um, for solar panels as we can. I think that's, and then just a, a couple of views that we have to show you the uh, development of the interior too uh, that's coming along. Um, and by the way, we have a session, it's next week, right, in our office, for those who can make it, we'll share some of these materials, you can put your hands on them and see them and touch them, and, um, uh, for both interior materials and some exterior materials as well. So here are some, a variety of views uh, of the interiors, just getting a little more developed, but uh, very consistent with what we've shown you before. And again, showing how we value natural light, but we are trying to be careful about where we where we uh, uh, utilize it, and and you know what's shown in that central learning commons, the, the yellowish wood there is natural wood, um, is real wood. It's the structure of the building and that part of the building and the cafeteria as well. Um, uh, so it gives a real warm feeling and, and obviously appropriate for the school in the woods. Kind of like that, and the ceiling, the decking material. You don't see acoustic tiles, which are pretty you know, ordinary and commercial. You, you see wood decking, which is structural in, in those limited areas. It's not throughout the building, um, but in that learning commons area and in a portion of the cafeteria, that's what you see when you look up. And it gives us more volume, too, because we're not hiding anything. You will see a few sprinkler pipes. You, you will see a few electric conduits. We, we, you know, we'll try to be, you know, uh, careful about how we run them and all and organize them, but they will be exposed. Um, but you can get a lot more volume that way without changing the floor to floor height of the, of the building. And it contributes to the teaching element of the building too, you know, when students can see parts of a building and how it operates. Um, let me let me put this back into presentation mode, and we can move on to the the C and that risk. While you're doing that, can I ask you? You had a thing, a slide for us that showed the interior materials um, at our working group meeting. If I could get a copy of that um, at some point, because we did a we did a walk today of the high school um, senior custodian and I, mm -hmm. 
to do a materials review four and a half years later. And it was really eye-opening, and it was really very positive. We've got some great things we'd love to reuse. Okay. Um, and, and some questions about the cafeteria, which I've talked to Courtney about, so. Mm -hmm. Is this the slide you're talking yes. about, Joyce? Yes, yes. But if that's in a presentation that's been shared, I can I can dig it out. But it was just yeah. looking for it. Get that to you. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, Take it. Yeah. so we do have to, uh, as part of the schematic design going into submission, we do have to make a decision whether to carry the cost, uh, which de delivery uh, method to use. And the high school was. Uh, mm -hmm done under the construction manager at risk uh, as opposed to the traditional design bid build. Um, and I uh, understanding that some of the community member was, were not here in the previous project. Uh, so just want to um, go over that. It, uh, these are the only two options under the Massachusetts public procurement process uh, for, the, for a project of this type uh, in terms of uh, school building. And the difference, uh, so the the traditional uh, design bid bill is that uh, you design the school, design the project, you go out to bid, and then whoever has the lowest price. Well, there is a, another piece is, is that you pre-qualify uh, the file sub bid and general mm -hmm. contractor, but then whoever has the lowest number gets the job. You don't have a say, and that's that. Uh, the CM at risk is, is that you, uh, as a committee, uh, can select a construction manager uh, at your choosing, um, you do not have to pick that by, uh, and then usually this is done in the, as early as possible, sometimes it's done in schematic design and or, but frequently it's done during the design development phase. And at that stage, you pick a uh, construction manager at risk with a uh, proposed fee for them to, that if they get the job, that they will charge you this much for the fee for the entire project, mm -hmm. and they will provide what's referred to as the pre-construction service. Um, and then the, having the contractor, a contractor to help you out during the design process that allow you to bring, allow them to bring the information on the market condition to the table and then advise the project to, and then also provide constructability review, et cetera, and then look at phasing to make sure that we can do the project most efficiently. And then so those are the benefits. Um, and then also that it is a lot easier to start an early package with a, a CM at risk, at risk. Um, so such as uh, the, uh, the bridge would be one of the items that you might consider as an early package so that you can gain some time from the, uh, from the schedule. Um, and design bid bill is the lowest pre-qualified uh, person, and then, uh, that's the, and then that's the only uh, selection <coughs> criteria. Um, and then the, uh, and then CM at risk would also, it's an open book process, so they're supposed to show you everything that is, uh, so that if they, uh, go out to, for the non-file sub bid, they go out to multiple subcontractors to uh, bid to price that job, and then whatever, um, and then you can, you don't have to pick the lowest one, number one, and then number two is just that whatever, if there is a saving in terms of what's referred to as a bid saving, uh, that that gets returned to the project and therefore returned to the town. Um, and then at the end of the uh, at the end of the job, whatever that's on use is returned. It just simply uh, never charged to the project uh, um, for that. Um, and then that there is a guarantee maximum price at that at some point. Uh, but the guarantee maximum sometimes is a little bit um, of a misnomer because what it means is really uh, the the cost of whatever is in the drawing. Whatever did not get get into the drawing, it's still, especially if it's file submit, you still have to pay for it. Um, so, uh, next slide. And then that CM at risk is most advantageous if it is a complex project or schedule uh, demand, de demanding project or a large project. Um, and then that uh, the that usually, uh, generally speaking, that there there are more construction manager at risk on the market for a project of this size, then uh, whereas the design bid bill, we will be looking at somewhere 
for qualified firms, it would be somewhere between three to five at most uh, for the size of the project that we're looking at in terms of GC. And we did a, um, uh, we did a, uh, uh, we researched the uh, MSBA project for the last four years. There are 30 elementary schools, out of which that uh, approximately 30% of it is uh, designed, uh, is um, done with a CM at risk, whereas the remaining is, uh, uh, is a CM at risk. Questions, thoughts? Uh, next. <coughs> um, and then that uh, the, uh, the, the pre-construction uh, service would allow to mitigate some of the risk, and then that, um, and then that the owner, uh, in this case, uh, the Vertex, will, will participate in descoping to make sure that uh, the, the actual, uh, what's carried in the scope meets the intent, and then therefore that will minimize the amount of change order coming back at, at the later day. And then the uh, buyout saving I mentioned already, and then the high school <coughs> came in on time and well under budget, and then so that uh, this is something that the town is familiar with. Um, and then the, in terms of, I think the next slide is the cost, right? Um, yeah, uh, so the, uh, the, and then obviously they have more direct knowledge of the market condition, and then that can help us plan in terms of if a particular material has a long lead, and then, but we can go another option, that will help us in the design process. And then that the, uh, and then also they will put, uh, the construction manager will do design re uh, drawing review to make sure that the drawing, uh, to try to have another pair of eye to make sure that the drawing are as complete as possible. And then that the, um, that the, it, the, the last item, which is uh, legally possible, that if you start out with a CM at risk process and then the, you cannot come to terms for GMP, you are allowed to go back to design bid bill. Uh, it takes a little bit of time it, it, because of the, the, to make the process work, but it is legal and it, it is within the right of the owner to do so. Um, and then in terms of how much, what's the cost delta, um, that if you, um, the, this is uh, uh, the breakdown, and then the long and short of it is, is that um, at the moment that you will be looking at somewhere between five to six percent uh, or five to six million dollars for the size of the project that we're talking about. Now, however, that initial ad frequently also translates to money left over at the end of the job that gets returned to the project. So that's not a true comparison for that uh, on that behalf, um, and then so that is something that uh, I just want to make sure that I, I'm clear on that. And I believe, um, and then the schedule um, is uh, that's easily manageable. We don't have any concern about that, and we can easily work it into this particular project. So uh, Vertex will take care of this if we should select that. Um, I want to stress. We do not need to make a decision today, but we would need to make a decision before we uh, finalize the budget uh, going into submission for schematic design. Uh, and I'm going to uh, stop here and then just uh, answer any questions uh, they may have. So you need the sense of the committee so we can put a correct amount into the appropriation request to town meeting? Uh, yes. The, so the total budget... It will, because there will be a five to six percent delta, and that we would need to, uh, the committee would need to make a decision on which direction we want to go for the budgeting purpose, uh, and then therefore uh, moving forward. And the, uh, when the, we already instructed the estimator to carry the cost both ways so that the committee would be able to see what's the delta. So I, I could just say, God bless, you know, just from my own perspective, and then I'll stop. I have a number of reasons why I, I, would, I would myself choose CM at risk. Don't know how the rest of the committee. Cost certainty would be one of the big ones, Joe. Yeah. And I, I made this point to Tim recently by phone, said, and he agreed. When we went on the road and sold the high school, we heard constantly people saying yeah you say it's only going to be x amount of dollars but you'll come back for more money and 
We never had to, and we couldn't explain to people why we wouldn't be because we were going CM at risk, and we had a we had a GMP to rely on. But, and I think the the first school project that ends up over budget, I think that will hinder every project thereafter. So, um, I like the idea of the cost certainty. And used to be we'd get a point from the MSBA, but we don't anymore. I'm told so. Not that it was critical, but. So that's my perspective. I don't know what anybody else thinks. How big is the uh, general contractor bidding pool for DBB? DBB right now that um, the three uh, uh, consistent design bid build firms are uh, uh, Agostini, Bacon, um, Fontaine, and uh, Bray. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Commodore had, and Consigli have recently started bidding um, design bid bill consistently, I, I was told that got a uh, won a job uh, as a design bid bill. Uh, but the the regular for this size, and, and I said mm -hmm. I, I, I qualify that there will be other contractors that will try to submit. But the qualified firms that right. I know off the top of my head, these mm -hmm. are the firms, and these are uh, all the firms that I mentioned are big enough to be able to handle this project this size and complexity. And so you will have genuinely three to five <coughs> truly competitive and qualified uh, 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 GC bid, but you live with the GC bid. Anyone else comment? Chin, do you know if there's a way to tell, like, I guess from the MSBA schedule, we could, uh, we could put something together and see how many projects are bidding all at the same time as well, uh, that are the similar track as us. If you go us. to that schedule for a second, we have in, uh, the, the, that list of uh, which you have on your, your slide deck, and then, uh, and then I can project that out for the, for the remaining projects. So this is a list of, uh, go back for a sec, go back one slide. So this is a list of uh, the, the most recent 20, uh, 30 projects of elementary school. Um, and then you can see that the start of construction, which is uh, this column here, that uh, they're already projecting all the way out into the 20, uh, August 25. Um, I'm, it's hard for me. And then so we will be, uh, so what I can do here is, is that uh, to collect that for all the projects and then uh, try to figure out how many projects are out there that will be bidding within, say, uh, plus minus six months of our project, because the contractor will do the thing of that. Oh, I like to work with this particular town, and then I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to skip on this one because I, I, I like this project better for whatever reason that may be. So we can bring that information to 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 share because. Uh, there has been situations where multiple large projects were going out to bid, so then you ended up uh, with uh, um, uh, people putting in numbers that are, they're basically saying, I'm willing to do it at this price situation. I'll say from my own perspective too, Carl, when we had a CM at risk, the committee didn't see any of the behind the scenes conflicts. They were all resolved between you, Vertex, mm -hmm. and the CM, and the committee didn't have to arbitrate any of those issues. They were resolved offline and brought back to us with a solution. So that was another thing I really liked. I don't know your perspective on that. It was probably a little more haggard than. <laughs> no, it, 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 there's definitely a um, sort of different relationship between design, bid, build contractors um, because one way to think of it is, you know, we, we spend all our time putting together 100% set of drawings and specs, and we give it to the world of eligible bidders and say, please give us your lowest price. And they say, okay, thank you very much. We'll look at these and we'll price exactly what's on this and only what's on this. And if we're, you know, we see a hole, we're not going to tell you about it, but we're going to reflect it in our lower price to get the job. So, you know, that sets up a little bit of an adversarial relationship sometimes where they you know we'd say no we 
we own that in plans. They say, no, you don't. That's the way we interpreted it. <laughs> when you're working with a construction manager who's been on board as you're putting your plans and specs together, you can you can work out those holes and intentions and so forth. So it becomes, in that sense, uh, you know, a bit smoother, a more you know, cooperative relationship. And then they also, the CM also have, will be doing the drawing review. So they cannot exactly say, well, you missed that, and then, but we didn't, you know, so it's yeah. like, no, you, you had a chance to you look at the drawing, too, you cannot. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and then. Mm -hmm. They also, I, yeah, they, Chin, one of the things they also did really well, I thought, is that they, um, and I won't name the firm because, of course, if we, depending on how we go, we'll evaluate them. But the firm we brought in, they brought in, I remember their presentation on logistics for construction was, mm -hmm. I mean, we had to, time everything really well because we were tearing down a building right after we and we were building about 50 feet or less away from the old school mm -hmm. really well presented really well managed and uh, I thought that was a good way to do it frankly so yeah. and, and then the um, the I am working on a design bit build job and then I have to say that I have very good experience with them but getting the schedule out of them was not an easy thing <laughs> Even though they're required by contract to give us a schedule, it took us three or four months to get the first real schedule. Yeah. So. Anybody else have any thoughts or questions? I have some questions. And for me, it's a matter of clarifying because the bulk of my life has been design, bid, build, horizontal. So it has no relation to anything that you guys are doing. Um, and then I came in on the, the end of the high school project. I, I'm just looking at a couple comments in your presentation. The CM can participate with the design team to work out options pending on the market conditions, such as choosing materials, mm -hmm. shortage, or have delivery issues. And that, it, it, you know, looking at what's happened to the market post-COVID, um, it's kind of reassuring that there's, I think, more options to, to, to deal with that. Is that something that is not an option if you were doing design but build, or it is just a change? A change uh, order, yeah. yeah. Change order, and then also the, um, the other thing is, is that because they are at the market, uh, they, these are contractors. So they know that, it, 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 like, uh, for instance, that uh, the, the, um, uh, uh, a job that is currently on that we're doing, that they say that, oh, uh, you want to use this material? And is that really what you want? If that's the case, we're going to start ordering and then store them so that we don't get hit with a price change. I, I told that to somebody today about why the high school was didn't suffer some of the same effects as projects that were you know a year later because they had the ability to, to pre-order and store. Exactly. And, and, and that is very yeah. true that you can do the the that you know or that they say oh we know that the drywall is going to go up three percent or five percent mm -hmm. after New Year. Um, even though we don't know how much, but we're going to pre-order and lock in the price, and then they can they can do that much more easily, yeah. and then they can advise. And then if we know that uh, a particular material doesn't is uh, there, you know, there's a shortage. Um, uh, roofing for a while was was like that, and then at that at one point that there was. Uh, I forgot which one of them, the EPDM or PVC. One of the two was completely unavailable. And then if you're going design bit bill and then you pick the wrong mm -hmm. roof, it's a major change. Yeah. Whereas the uh, the the uh, CM would have told you that you know don't go that way, go uh, pick this particular product. And then when we when we spoke last uh, at the working group, and you presented it, one of the things that I heard was that with the amount of site work and wetlands and roadways and whatever that this was better suited to design bid build. But then I'm seeing a comment in the CM risking early release enabling packages for those types of things helps expedite the schedule. So where does where does so, our amount of site work impact? So the so the so w I think that this is sort of I'm slightly on the fence on this one is is that the um, the project is not big, the once you get out of the wetland. Okay. Once you, you get, get across the bridge, once you cross the bridge <laughs> and get out of the wetland, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Two things. Once you do that and then get out of the blasting, yes. The rest of the project is not too complicated. Okay. Okay. And however, if you mess up either one of the two, you might just fry your schedule. 
right? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing you have to do. You have to okay. cross the wetland, build a bridge, <laughs> and then you have to do the blasting. <laughs> and if you don't do that right, then you, you, you just lost your schedule. But <coughs> where's the advantage for CM versus design bid built? One has more. If you do the CM, you can early release okay. the bridge work ahead of time okay. so that you have certainty that you can get it done. You helped me make up my mind. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Joe, please. So um, having n not the history that our professionals do in the room, there's, there's always three reasons why I'm a CM at risk supporter. Um, one is um, kind of simple. The cost is the cost is the cost. Uh, second, I love that the professionals and not a building committee can come to resolutions on what's the best solution uh, and not the politics, uh, mm -hmm. with all due respect. Mm -hmm. And uh, third, uh, Stoughton has a positive history with CM at Ricks. Don't try to fix something that hasn't been broken, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's not broke. Those would be three reasons for me to support the CM at Ricks, but again, I'm just one vote and I'll do whatever the committee wishes. Anybody else? And again, we're not seeking for a vote. And this is just, we will price it, and then the committee can make a decision. I think we could probably take a vote now if it were on the agenda, but it's not. But <laughs> So I, I would confidently go forward with your sense of the committee here. <clears throat> Anybody else have anything to say? Uh, Fran? I was at, You're very quiet down I'm there. not a woman of many words, but I do listen, and I don't have to repeat something that's already been said. But the high school was built through CM at risk. And although um, the fire station project is a design bid build and, and it's going very well, I think for a project for this size and even the redistricting and, like you said, the site work, the bridge and everything, I would absolutely recommend going, you know, depending on, you know, the results that come through. But I would prefer that. I don't want to call anyone else out, Catherine. But, but, no, that's okay. Sorry. Um, anyone else on this at all? If not, I think you heard the discussion. You can yeah. mm -hmm. price well, we're, accordingly. We're definitely bring you the number, and then, uh, yeah. and then we, we assemble the, the package together. Great. Thank you. So, uh, new business. I just have one, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, uh, at the school committee uh, meeting last night, I was provided um, some uh, uh, provided some thoughts on uh, Ms. Husseini, who's actually retiring um, from us. I didn't know that. And um, and uh, oh going to go off into the real world. <laughs> However, um, I have authority to enter into go ne negotiations with her to keep her on board part time, specifically through June connected to major projects, including this project. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the time comes, the changeover will happen. So um, you'll continue to see her at the uh, building committee meetings, uh, representing the uh, facilities department for uh, Stoughton Public Schools um, through at least June um, of this year. So just want to make sure in case you hear rumblings otherwise <laughs> that she's not here every day, uh, that she will be uh, continuing to work with us uh, part time and uh, with this project being one of her priority areas. Mm -hmm. It's great. As we try to fill the position. Cool. Where do I send my resume? <laughs> well, um, oh, you don't want I, mean, I, I can tell you right now, uh, based on our 424 in the morning phone calls, you probably don't want to. <laughs> you probably don't want the job. Um, I had one other I brief. Uh, I was going to call you, Diane, about this uh, beforehand. But, so I was thinking maybe we ought to have some sort of offline I don't want to call it a subcommittee, but maybe a small working group on how to pay for the project. Oh. You know, how, uh, and it would be something to work with the town manager with and the FinCom part. That's why I was going to call yeah, you. Maybe get someone else from the FinCom on that, because I've heard some ideas from people on, you know, how it should be structured and all of which are wonderful, but. It's a, I mean, that's a threshold question. What are we talking about for cost now? Do we have? Uh, so the uh, pre previous, uh, previous cost. Project cost was something in the $116 million range. 116? 116, a little over uh, 100. Uh, and then the MSBA reimbursement, we are at 50, I want to say 54.9% is our base rate, 
uh, for eligible costs. Uh, and MSBA has recently changed the, their baseline. You're still using the, 50, the, the same percentage for the time being, but the, what they would uh, consider to be eligible has significantly changed so that you're getting a lot more back. Um, and so what in the old days that we would advise our client is that whatever your base rate drop 20 percentage point is the real number at the end of the day. Uh, and then so like the project I'm on uh, has a base rate of thir uh, the almost 40%, 39. And then but the uh, effective reimbursement is like 20. Okay. Um, that number had changed. Um, the, I, this morning I did my first round of uh, just rough number. And then so I cannot, uh, I haven't done, gone back and then uh, revisited this. It's like the, we might be, um, the, we might be in close to 40% effective. So 115 and then you, 40%, uh, if you get 40% back from the MSBA that you will get about, uh, then ballpark is say 60, uh, you're only paying 60% of the say $65 million, 70 million. Under 70 probably, right? Yeah, town share. If those right. numbers stays, uh, uh, caveat is, is that those, if num those numbers stay. So um, my point is how to pay is sort of a general and broad and almost stupid way to ask the question because, of course, we know how we're going to pay. We're gonna, right. It's going to be a debt exclusion. Debt exclusion. Yeah. Dave Lurie actually had a proposal that he, that he ran by yeah. me once, and I won't he play it on it. To me, sure. It was creative, and, and it made me think there are some ways to structure this. All policy questions that are beyond this committee, but we can certainly analyze things. And he would be the first one I would call. Yeah, him. we can certainly okay. analyze and recommend things. So, sure. um, does anybody have any uh, uh, thoughts on that? Because I don't. Rob a bank. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good idea. Uh, DJ, I had a question. Has yeah, the please. date been established for a debt exclusion vote after a town meeting? Um, not firmly. I was. I think we've sort of been targeting the same, same schedule as the high school project. First Tuesday in June would be mm -hmm. probably. Okay. I mean, the other option, and it it's, seems to be a, a uh, just a quirk of the presidential cycle. We were in the same position then too, where we had if we missed that June date, right. we could have also chosen for a, for a state primary date in September. Or the national election date in November. In mm -hmm. that this was back in 2016. So, so the, uh, the yeah. primary is, uh, date is already set for the first Tuesday in September. Yeah. So it was either pick a date in June, or we could have rushed everything and tried to make the April election date. But we never would have made that, of mm -hmm. course. So because of the MSBA meeting schedule. So probably first week in June, first Tuesday in June. And then just to. Just looking at some of the changes in the last couple of years prior to the building project for the high school, there seems to be some more added days in June's town meeting schedule in the last year. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we went well into June. So mm -hmm. if town... A couple of years ago, we went to June 30th. Right. <laughs> and, well, that was part of the whole <laughs> state I budget the fiasco. Yeah. The, the discussion we had back then is probably the discussion we'll have again this year, too, is... If we go too far into June, then we get into people's vacation schedules yeah. and we lose people. If we're, you know, on, on the other end, so um, maybe we should have that discussion in the next month, two months, whatever. Okay. Well, I'll call Dave yeah. in the next day or two. Because he did, he, he stopped me one day too and said he had some interesting ideas. The, I do want to um, uh, bring this to the committee's attention that if we move these, uh, so I also draft out a very, very brief outline schedule, at least in my head, uh, and the if we push to September or November dates, um, it will put more pressure onto the schedule, um, and that would make it so that the, so the, if we do the June uh, vote, uh, it will make it very uh, straightforward because basically 
it will take three more years for occupancy, one year for getting the drawing and two years to do construction. And then that schedule works quite nicely because what it does is, is that you finish the building in uh, Ju June, July timeframe. You do the furniture and technology install. And then in August, you move in and you're ready to go uh, to open the school. Uh, if we push back by two months, it's not impossible, but it puts significant uh, more pressure on the schedule, and then that means the the the, uh, the room for error is significantly reduced. Well, if, and for perspective on the on the vote too, the April town election had an 11 percent turnout that year. The June debt exclusion vote had a 27 percent turnout that year, and that was the highest turnout for any election. Mm -hmm any local election in the last 15, 20 years or something like that. So, I mean, that we were in June, we thought was going to be a problem. It wasn't. But this is an elementary school. It might be a little different. So, If to you, Mr. Chairman, no, if, if, um, if this is an improved in, uh, approved in June, um, is that a good time to put out a, a bid package? What would uh, be a good time to put out a bid package? June will be, uh, in terms of overall schedule, uh, if we have the approval in June, that will, uh, the, the schedule is very easy mm -hmm. to, to do. Um, if you say September, can we still make the same opening day? Uh, I would say, I would still say yes, but I would definitely need a CM, and I definitely would be doing the early package and other um, how about, I, I will how be, about contractor wise? I mean, would they be all booked by the time September came along? Um, so the thing is, is that we don't exactly hire a contractor until much later, so that okay. uh, it's a little. Uh, so that that question I cannot answer you. Uh, and then also that if you go design bid building, then you put. If you go September, I will be very reluctant to go design bid build because of the schedule crunch. I'm just being honest about uh, okay. sort of. I, I will miss the, the, trying to make the school opening day uh, in late August or early September will be just difficult. Okay. Any other new business? <coughs> just uh, two quick items, Mr. Chairman. No, through you, uh, last night's school committee meeting, uh, we did announce the beginning of looking at a. Um, task force subcommittee for the purposes of looking at our actual buildings. In other words, prepare um, what is going to happen to um, these changes in buildings um, with the potential of the project, so the South School, the Wilkins, the Jones, et cetera. Um, so we'll be reaching out to some folks that have worked um, on facilities master plans in the past because they have some history of our buildings. And then, of course, anyone else um, that the committee so chooses. And then the second is trying to get, um, I know that we have the, the um, uh, schedule for an actual submittal at the end of February. Correct. So that means we're going to get a co an actual pretty, sig an actual cost sometime. What, what's the tentative date right now? So right now that we anticipate by February 1st, we will have the complete package. And then we will review with that uh, with the uh, the working group um, and uh, February 14th okay. uh, is the next uh, committee if the committee meets still on the second uh, Wednesday February 14th will be the day that we will bring that cost to the committee uh, for your review and then then between the 14th and the 28th we would uh, present it to the remaining part of the town uh, Fincom uh, so, like, so on, on behalf of um, Ms. Weiss, who's here tonight, and the entire school committee, we would be looking f to a school committee presentation <coughs> um, and vote of support by the school committee um, right after um, your vote and prior to um, the 29th. So we, we probably will have to schedule just a meeting just for that purpose mm -hmm. with the school committee if that's if that's. Uh, so the, okay, the information will be public by the 14th, and then so any 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 time after that. Any time after that will be uh, will be. So I'll work with you through the chair okay. to get a date for that presentation with the school committee. We'll make it the only, if we can, the only agenda item for that night because I know the committee is eager to get the price, see the final um, submission, and then come out with its vote um, to su to support the project. Yeah. 
next week is school vacation. All right. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Katie, thank you for your motion to adjourn. Yep. Joe, thank you for your second. <laughs> Happy to do it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Great. <laughs>